Welcome to our feature presentation, Spot and Follow Profitable Institutional Money Moves. We want to invite you today into the world of high probability trade setups that you can find by the activity of institutions that move in or out of an asset. Here you see a picture of myself. This is me and the legal disclaimer. What we show you tonight is based on a trading system that I developed and used and brought to the market since 2008. I'm looking back at the tenure of more than 30 years of trading as a private investor and I want to share integrities yeah, and details with you of how you can spot and follow institutional money moves, make that profitable for yourself. Yeah, That's the idea of sharing that with you and this is why Kevin invited me in here because you see it on the next chart, there is kind of a pre-stage and a continuation stage that is recordable so you can spot when these things happen and you can follow them. You just need to have the right understanding of how that works and goes. And this is what I want to invite you in of getting that notion and getting that idea and being part of participating in the market within trading uh, a system. What's a trading system? A trading system is supporting you in predicting the potential price move in the future, short or longer term. And with these pre-stages that I just defined, they're basically coming from price changes, volume changes, and statistical volatility changes. We can use specific mass that I developed over the years in finding those spots. So you see them here put on the chart where you see defined entry and exit points, and uh, where you see buy or sell, and only we do this, and I'll come to that why, when the next candle is taking that threshold out here. Yeah? So you see here on the left chart, there is a buy for 26.29. Next candle took it out, so we ran a trade. We traded to the upside, and we traded to that dot. And I'll show you how that works and why. Because I want to give you some more market insights so that you understand what you do, why you do it, and how the market in particular works. Financial markets are complex. Yeah. So this is the thing we have to look at. They are complex. Here I showed you a com show you a complex ecosystem. Yeah? And when the financial markets are complex, using simple mass like moving average based mass or form fitting mass like uh, an Elliott wave, which was developed nineteen thirty four, yeah, then uh, we have only a random chance of being on the right side of the trade. And that's difficult. To be on the wrong side of the trade, we need to be able to predict systems into the future and seeing when they break out, yeah, when that school or swarm of fish breaks out, where is it going to break out to? And here you see the pattern of how it's going to look when it breaks out. And uh, how can we predict that? To predict it uh, from the outside in pattern, basically we humankind have no way of doing so. However, we can look at the interior relations, or I call them interactors. Yeah? So one chart moved ahead. Sorry for that. So I'm just moving back. Yeah. So the interactors of that system, they are doing a breakout to the left, to the right, to the up, or to the down. There's many different angles. But when you understand that, for example, the crowd follows the leaders, you can work on a basic mass where breakouts and directions, even in such a chaotic system, can be predictable. And that's that's what computer technology allows for us, and this is how we can take level two and level three information and predict it forward. Because the base intercorrelation of the market is that we, in particular what we observe here, is transactions that happen on a marketplace. Yeah, a market is a medium that buyers and sellers of a specific good or service interact in order to exchange. So one wants to buy for a certain amount, the other wants to sell, and only if those offers match, then we have an exchange. Yeah? So that's important. But more important even is with the electronic exchange, we catapulted ourselves into the new age of being able to compete par to par with the big institutional investors. And that's what we're going to focus on tonight here. How do we compete par to par with the big firms, the brokerage houses, those who dominate the market. And I show you why they dominated and how, and I give you the background of it here. Yeah? And the NASDAQ here, which I put up here, is a prime example because pure electronic, no more tickets, no more runners, none of all these old technology. There we can compete the best. Yeah? And our 
edge, yeah, because you say when you when you go there, what is my edge? Our edge is uh, to move ahead because we can enter and exit entire positions at once. It's us to make the decision because we don't have a million shares of Apple. That wouldn't even matter. 10 million or 100 million shares of Apple, which we need to place in the market at a certain point in time. The amount which we buy is basically not noticeable. That counts for futures trades and for uh, stock trades. In options, we'll have to know more because with options, it is very important to understand how much volume per time unit observed is in the market, and then we are better traders. This is all we teach, and we'll go through that step by step tonight and work together. Yeah. So when you see the base interaction is following an economic principle, the price of that the participants are willing to pay is a function of supply and demand. Very basic. If you understand that, you can get into algorithmic trading. There's sure a little bit more behind it. But if that's true, then as a consequence, a change in supply or demand will trigger price change. We all know that tomatoes have a different price in summer than they have in winter, and that's a function of supply and demand. You might not have the same demand in winter, but also the supply is much less, and so therefore we have a very, very different price base for it. Yeah? And when you see that, that accounts also for the markets we are looking at, the stock market, the commodities market, the treasuries, and the currencies. The only little exception is currencies. I don't want to go too deep into that, because in currencies, more than 85% of the transactions are on the counter. That makes that type of uh, future or forex pair a little more complicated to trade at times. Yeah? But anyhow, that's, that's an, in market integrity we just need to understand. So we can spot and follow supply and demand changes because we can uh, check on significant influences and what they do, and we'll show you how that's done, and then we define the interaction and the move of the system, and with that we can measure change of the basic interaction and move ahead. So we can understand and make visible on the chart how the markets work, why prices move, and at what points we are getting into this. That's what I want to show you here tonight. So let's look at the key influences. There was a wonderful study done in uh, 2007. It was done by the ETH, that's the University of Zurich, and it was actually done at the Department of Physics. They looked at the base interaction of the 43,060 biggest companies in the world measured on OECD measures. And so they found out that there were more small than a million relationships of ownership. But when we scale down, or they scale down to the core details, there were 147 institutions that controlled more than 40% of the ownership. That's important. If you have so few companies controlling so much, their action will predict and make a move if they buy or sell. And you can make that visible. Yeah? So this is the core of what we brought out. Never lost trading uh, with its tenure is in the market since 2008 and helping people to find education levels of how to spot and follow institutional money moves and we moved ourselves ahead and uh, now present all these details. So in 2007 that study was made, but you say, wow, financial crisis, 2007, 2008, what happened after? Did all these relations get destroyed or is it still the same? And I'll tell you one thing, it got even worse or better for us because the big, the, the private investors moved more and more away from, uh, let's say, mutual funds. And investment tools, they are not really liquid. Yeah, you know, mutual funds, you sell them tonight, they sell at the market close of tomorrow. That's a, not the best idea of getting a good price. Yeah, and so therefore, all these mutual funds, basically since 2007, were stagnating. Uh, and within the stagnation of that, on the other hand, we had institutional investors moving way ahead within putting much more money to other institutions where they felt better, they can do it better than them, because in the financial crisis they got burned. They recognized they can't control the market as good as the leaders of the market, and so within that, a lot of the insurance companies, the banks, I call them low-risk investors, they come to this, they move to people who have a tenure of making good decisions in the market. And those only offered specialized funds to other institutions. They're not available for you and I. 
Yeah, but to other institutions they are. And since 2007, we had a 300 billion dollar capital increase that more of those 147 companies that are listed prior are controlling. So the control of the big money is big, and that's our big advantage. Let's not complain about it. It's a market fact. Let's accept the market fact, and within that, move ahead and make take advantage of it. It's our duty as uh, 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 private investors to focus on what the market does, where it leads to, and how it moves ahead, and we are just good followers. We are in uh, at a certain point, and we are out at a certain point, and that helps tremendously for making good decisions when we understand how markets move and how they follow. Yeah? But this is capital here. 300 billion capital, a 50% increase in specialized funds. That's big. I can prove all these. Yes, yeah, so I didn't make that up in my mind. I got all the background for all these studies and all that. I just want to share it with you so that you have an understanding there's a concentration in the market of big institutions that make decisions and their footstep. Yeah, Their footstep, if the elephant moves, we can record it and we can follow that trail. That's beautiful. Yeah, So let's look into those. Yeah. They, we basically characterize the markets into three different groups. The leaders, those are called often prop traders, proprietary traders trading their own monies. They trade their own accounts, so they want to do it for the best, and they find the best asset in class. Those are the ones who really dig down deep into the balance sheets, technology, and all of that. They have all these intelligent and well-educated people doing all-day market analysis to find the best asset in class. It could be cotton, it could be Apple, and it could be a different company tomorrow like Tesla or whoever who changes the market. They find it out, but their market action when they start to collect or purchase the assets of such a company or let's say a future, we recognize them and we see it because you know they're not only doing it now for themselves, they do it in their specialized funds. They have much more market tenure. And everybody else recognizes too, so this is how the market works. The followers recognize, and so do the gatekeepers. Who in the world are the gatekeepers? Market makers, yeah? They provide the liquidity. This is why we're not like for a house, you have to wait till your realtor finds somebody who buys your house. In the stock market, you can sell instantaneously as long as you, as you offer what's asked for, yeah? And that's, that's a big difference in that market. You have a liquidity provider. And you have two kinds of some markets have assigned liquidity providers. Others, they have open liquidity providers. And we'll come to this, and i show you a little overview between the, Na the NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange. So the liquidity providers in the order books, they see immediately if there's additional supply or demand. Things are going to move, so they control the action. They control the action. And when they control the action, you can see their control of the action, and you can work along with it if you understand the pattern of how that works. And we'll have plenty of charts after to show that. And then you have the followers, the rest of the market, all jumping in, going with the big crowd, moving ahead, the fund managers, the bank, the insurances. Everybody wants to take their share of the movement that's out there. And we want to do that too. We want to be part of this one here, of the followers. With the big advantage, we can go all in, all out. Yeah, that's our Texas Hold'em strategy. It's not a strategy for every trade, but we have an advantage here. Yeah? All the institutions have so much to invest, they can scale in and scale out only. And even there are certain SEC regulations on size, what you can sell per day. We can do all positions in, all positions out, regardless of our bank account as a private investor. It's not going to matter in a whole scheme of things. That's beautiful. So we have an edge if we are followers. Yeah? And so here you see a short overview, overview of the key influencers. Yeah? Here prop traders. Yeah? Like, well, who are they? Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, also listed a couple of international ones, Deutsche Bank, United Bank of Switzerland, Credit Suisse, Barclays. Yeah, they're all in this. Then you got the, all the fund managers. Yeah? You have pension funds. Oh my God, who in the world is those? Look, the biggest invested pension funds is the Japanese well, in, in the U.S. is a Japanese workers postal fund, yeah? So there, there's still pension funds around, Norwegian pension funds. Yeah, then you have all these mutual funds, start from Oppenheimer going to ING, which are related to 401k plans. And they all follow indexes, yeah? So they barely make the index, but they follow indexes, and within that have an offering. And if you have a 401k plan, there's little you can do, uh, because you know you might have a good employer that matches 50% of your investments, and so then you're in this. But also you need to control that action, yeah. And then you have the low-risk investors. 
yeah, so it's like insurances and banks that short term invest their capital in the market and don't want to take a lot of risk. And so they moved a lot to buying those specialized funds from the prop traders. Yeah, so that's the money movement that really happened in the market since the financial crisis till today. And then you got the liquidity providers. And you have two kinds of assigned and acting as. Uh, the ones that are acting as, they just want to be in the market to see in their order book if the things are happening and to take advantage of that. And when you bring all this together, which is very doable with modern mass and today's computer technology, then you have an edge of understanding and seeing what's going on. Just a little overview of market makers, because it's often is, oh, wow, what's, what's happening, what's that? New York Stock Exchange, there's seven powerful companies that control the entire market. And on the NASDAQ, you have more than 500 members acting as market makers, offering at the bid and ask side. So you see in the New York Stock Exchange, you have a much higher influence of a few companies compared to the NASDAQ, where you have much more an open market strategy between them. And all the interaction of these influences, they leave a trace. So we can find, based on our mass movement, yeah, buy me and sell me out here because that's the minimum movement I expect. Sell me and get out of here because the minimum movement I expect. Yeah, you see he's a, he's a, he's a horizontal line or dot on the chart that signifies your first SPU target. Yeah, SPU stands for speed unit. And that's the minimum price move you accept, expect after institutional money engagement came into the trade. And this is how it looks like. And I show you plenty of examples. I made it really actual because, you know, I'm not a very short-term trader, so I have time on hand to put a couple of charts if I want to or do something else or write an article because I trade mostly hourly for our daily charts. I'm not trading very often 10-minute charts or one-minute chart, totally not at all, because then the odds are not in my favor, yeah? And instead of force-fitting the actual happening in a predefined mathematical operation that's like a moving average crossing, or as I said before, an Elliott wave or other models like CI indicators, they're not going to give you what you want to have. You want to have an activity-based system where the activity of now triggers the happening of the future so it's confirmed by the followers following the leaders. Yeah? So that's a very, very different concept developed and offered to you as retail traders, which you can put in the back of your mind because, you know, the big institutions swing about 90% of the financial markets and their buy and sell behavior is recordable and their buy and sell behavior is also having a humongous advantage for you when you record it because you see differentials. And you don't have to do the math yourself. It took me just 20,000 hours to put it together. Uh, and, and the years of knowledge, you can participate in this by spotting supply and demand patterns and their change, by understanding the action of the key market makers, how in a downtrend the market maker has to adjust inventory. How do they adjust inventory? They adjust inventory by uh, reducing the offering per price unit, so then people who want to cover, they have to pay up. And that's reflected in the system. Or if the market rapidly moves up, what will happen? The market rate will flood. They increase the quantity offered per price unit. With that, the prices fall, so that buyback inventory at better prices will move ahead. Look at all the buildings of those market makers that I showed you here, and you see that they know the system and how it works. But you can be part of this. You can copy their action because you're independent. You're not having 100 million shares of Goldman Sachs or Apple or whoever to sell, you're having a smaller amount in the market. And also, I uh, encourage you to think much more shorter term. If you trade day trade, think in one to five bars. If you trade as a swing trader, think in one to five days. And if you're a long-term investor, think in one to five weeks. Those are really key behavior patterns that I can prove to you that give you much more return than anything else that you might predict into the long-term future. Because just think about when you uh, reinvest all the time, making the same additional amount of money that you make on the initial move, rather than waiting out a long move that might halt in between or even reverse. Yeah? So trade with it. That's your big advantage. Come on board with a system that gives you an edge because you're faster and because you're smaller. And that's a big advantage, yeah? So constant income from trading 
only comes basically from defined entries, exits, and stops. We'll work on that. And uh, assuming probability. So you have to understand, I have a 65% probability of the chart set up to conclude. I have 85% probability because you need to make your position size according to this. Like in baseball, sometimes you hit for getting to the next base the next time you hit for the fences. So you'll need to make that determination with the help of modern mass and systems that help you, not just your gut feeling, because the gut feeling alone is not good enough. Therefore, we have computers, but the final decision, we should still be the captain of our own airplane and decide for our investments. Yeah? And this is, this is what I'm teaching here to you. Yeah? So clear risk rules, preventing drawdowns, very, very, very important. I show you a couple of systems in between uh, that do that. and expected time. I told you already, expect to be 1 to 5 bars or 1 to 10 bars at max in the trade. When then your trade moved in realize, you better move into something else because that makes no sense to invest in assets that don't move. We are not in the market to be right. We are in the market to make returns and earns and turns make returns. Yeah, That's very important. Yeah, then you need to have a trade finder because you're just focusing on one instrument most likely is not going to get you where you want to be. And the trade finder, a good system, an alert system, helps you to be on board. We offer that also for people who don't subscribe to our software. Uh, we offer alert systems where every night we look at key stocks and uh, futures and forex pairs, which have that market pressure for moving ahead. And you'll find that all on our website. And here, business plan. Who of you has a business plan? You need to have a business plan that is containing a financial plan and an action plan uh, so that you know what to do when and what time of the day. We move ahead here and uh, we look at defined entries, exits, stops, and probabilities. Yeah? When we want to look at this, at the chart, say, okay, where do we enter for a buy or sell order? Where do we exit? Where do we have uh, our stops? Where we have risk? And what are your probabilities to succeed? These are all very essential decisions Everybody who wants to trade successfully has to make it at some point in time. And if you don't prepare for this, you don't prepare for this. But professionals are prepared, and this is where we make a difference within teaching you how you can prepare professionally for taking money out of this market because it's there for you. You're smaller, you're smarter when you see it, when you follow the institutional money moves, and you're faster, so you have the edges on your side. Because what happens really, institutions move the price out of a certain range. Our indicators make that visible. When that range movement is confirmed, so it's a smidge in the head where the price moves because then followers buy or sell into the direction, then we understand what's going on and we calculate our minimum price move that we attain in one to five bars and we trade with it to the upside or to the, do to the downside. Show some CL and TF trade futures. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that for you. Uh, but right now, I don't have the system on. I'll, I'll go on with this. Yeah? So I'll keep it in the back of my mind. Thank you. Yeah? So this is how it's portrayed on the chart. Yeah? The algo priced move uh, from the institutional leaders is here. It's called the NLTHF chart. HF stands for high frequency because it allows you to trade a lot and uh, to have a lot of participation rate. I always measure participation rate, and I show you a couple of examples. So in how many of the directional price opportunities are you participate? Most traders don't even recognize this, but you have to see in the end of the day, if so many trades moved, what's your rate of participation? If your rate of participation is infinitesimal, zero, or very low, then it's not going to help anybody. Yeah? And so this is, this is where we make a difference within helping you to find those trades within inbuilt scanners in our systems, or within good trade preparation that comes from our alerts. Yeah? And uh, within that said, let's move ahead and see within the price expansion why we do this. So we calculate the NLT SPOO, speed unit. It's a measure of the expected price movement per time unit observed after institutional engagement. And within that, we have an idea of where our exit is. So we can take a positive exit not a negative one. If you do a trailing stop, usually you give more than 50% of your earned money away. Uh, if you have a positive exit where you know there's market turns most likely going to be happening, then you're doing yourself much more easy. And look here, I've made a very actual chart this morning. 
uh, to put together the, the euro. Yeah? Here you see a chart that's an Nevelos trading top line chart and you see left from right where you have these check marks. There were positive trades. I didn't make them up. System can't be changed. There's no Photoshop. I can show you that live too. Yeah, so you saw here there was a buy move on this one. Okay, it came and it moved its way. There was a buy move on here. There was the target, so wonderful. There was another buy here, yep, came to target, and then prices returned. So why didn't you get this one? No, this system didn't trigger a price move to the downside, but an upside and a downside move. So we had five predicted price moves in two months. Each of them per contract was about $1,500. That's not bad. Yeah, that's not bad. Why don't you have 15? Because you know sometimes they don't happen. But you see here, you have that. But what, what I tell you, you can have 15 or 20 or 25 if you open up your mind for more assets to control. And within more assets to control, you'll need to see and understand how they move and how they work and how the system can give you the advantage of making those moves. But even if you like a longer term investor, so here on this one, you knew two things. The first price move between one and five bars is going to be to the dot. If you want to go to the bar, it might take you 10. So let's count. Yeah, so one, two, three, four. Oh, yeah, you're in it. You're in the first one to five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Boom, we hit it. Yeah, so we came to our target. And so this is a trading system where you look much more shorter term because in the long run, we all dead. It's not going to work. In the long run, you can never predict the market for six, eight months out because so many happenings are there. But for one to five bars, there's a lot of market pressure behind it. Why? Institutions scale in and out. So they do the action. You can follow the action. So lower time frame. I took the Australian dollar here. And I just look, it's, it's very actual. I, I took the chart in the morning between 7 and 8, yeah? So this is this the 8 o'clock candle. So here we go. Bang, first price move, yeah? Yesterday night. That's the thing. Australian dollar always moves between 8 and 10, yeah? Next price move. Yeah, wonderful. That's the direction we want to take. And that's the direction we want to take again. And here we have a very nice direction in coming to the downside. So this system is helping you to find all these. I will not have the time to explain all those lines, but we call them lime lines, so we know when the center line line here breaks, there's a high probability that we come to a satellite line. And within that, we can trade and expand our trade. So even here, you could have expanded your trade. You add to your trade. You take your profit. You add to your trade. And this is how you can continue making more money along the lines with an understanding when center lines are broke. Then we have a rather weak environment than a strong environment. And then you want to go short. And here you see in our color scheme is short environment is red, market maker adjustment move. You, you remember what I said? The market maker has to adjust inventory. Yeah, woof, the market comes in. The market maker adjusts inventory. Yeah, the market comes in. What's now? The market maker adjusts inventory. What's the prediction of the future? We don't know. We wait for a signal. It can be like this, all the way up. It can be all the way down. Whatever happens, the system will tell us, and we trade right along with it. Yeah. Here, Apple. Yeah, I just took an Apple chart yesterday, 7-7-2015. Seven, seven, uh, so market opened in the morning. Bang, gave us a big sell signal. There was the target. Came to target. And you see, after they came to target, you better took your profit because there was no more there after the hour closed. But if you had your entry, you sold here with a, a, a sell stop order, and you have your exit in here, and you had your stop right here where the cyan dot is, you brought that thing home, and then you got the reversal. Oh, whoa, wonderful. Yeah, great reversal. Sell it to that line. There is no dot on the orange chart. That's top line chart, so one hour. So we have all these examples, and we are happy if you want to have a personal introduction to the system to give you a personal hour on this if you're interested in being part of that. Because they say, how do you learn this? How can you take advantage in learning a system like this? Oh, we are moving way ahead here with my little cursor. Uh, will help you within giving you individual training. So it's one-on-one, -on -one because I haven't met in uh, these eight years that we opened the company uh, one trader who does the same or wants to do the same as another. Everybody is different in their available time of the day. Some work, some don't. Some have a business. Some have only this time available. And we tune everything to your demand. Uh, different trading accounts. Some have IRAs. Some have cash accounts or custodian accounts. 
some have margin accounts, so it's all different, yeah? And so therefore we, we tune the program so that your specific need is met. Uh, if you have eight Apple traders in a room and you're going to be trading cotton futures, it's not going to be your best day of taking good education. So therefore we control what you do. We had one student only trading random length lumber. Why? He had a production output needed to deliver to Home Depot, a constant prices, so we helped him out. Gave him a system and that, he, that he's trading right now, having constant prices, because you know market price fall. He shorts the market with random length lumber futures that he sells, and he makes his money in his account, and within that can provide steady prices without taking a hit on his profitability. When the market goes up, he makes additional income, and that's how it's supposed to do. Yeah? Targets, returns, focus and likes are like stocks, are like options, are like futures, are like forex. We look at all of these and your risk tolerance to put together a plan, and I'll show you later on an example of a plan where we have all these integrities in it for a day trader. I just took that most recent one that I did, where we propose to the day trader. We not determine what you have to do. We give you a proposal, what you can do, and how you can make the best money out of your investment capital, and it doesn't you don't need to disclose your account to us. We just do that on $20,000 or $5,000 or one, uh, something that you can scale up or down, and then you decide what it's going to be. But everything is scalable. Yeah? So that's the very essential and uh, important. Yeah? So constant income from trading we want to do by defined entries and exits and stops. You see you've got check marks already on them. And we're assuming probabilities of trade setups. When you know from the chart, you have 65% probability, it's a different hit that you take, then you have an 85% probability of a setup that comes to target, and this, this we definitely teach you. But then risk, that's important. Yeah, this is what, one thing I learned from a lot of institutional people I work with. They have a risk manager and clear risk guidelines. If you violate those risk guidelines, somebody comes to your trade desk and says, John, if you want to work here tomorrow, you better follow the risk guidelines. You violated the following things, and we don't want you to do this. Yeah, that's good. You need to be your own risk manager within doing exactly that action, but up front, not after the fact. So why up front? So here I show you for the futures. This is what you learn with the futures trade. Yeah? So here's two trades uh, that are actual situation. It's one for the 6A and one for the 6C, the Canadian dollar and the Australian dollar. And so you see here a risk setup uh, where you do the following input fields, and then it gives you an idea and says, uh, based on this one, I recommend you to do two lots of your normal lot size. So depending on how much you invest in a, in a lot, we'll work with you on that. But the Canadian dollar had a setup where it said, ah, if you even need to trade this because the odds are not in your favor, it's 1.5 to 1, then just only take half a lot if you really want to have that trade size, uh, that trading thing done for yourself. If you can take half a lot, that's the best because the odds are not in your favor. And this is what you need to learn as a private investor with simple tools that you can have on hand. Am I doing a good trade? We are not in it for being right. We are in it constantly, repetitively, and within repetitive action, if you repetitively do good trades rather than bad trades, your outcome will be positive. Same surely for stock environment. Yeah? So here we have Tesla stock, yeah? two trade environments. On the one hand side, we wanted to trade the stock. Yeah? And all the input fields we put in, so what's our SPU measure? We take that from the chart, the entry price, the target price, the exit price. And even so, that's a little unfavorable for us. Still, the system says, look, with your setup, because you have a power tower outside the purple zone, and you learn this, your probability is very high, so you cleared risk management. Just look at your stop placement if you can put it tighter. But here you have a 2 to 1, a 2.1 to 1 probability. Two lots is what we recommend you. And this is your expected return. However, if you start to trade the, the, the call option and it comes out with that financial configuration, be a little bit more careful because you know your odds are not totally in your favor. And so it'd rather take a small lot if you normally do uh, 20 contracts on such a thing than do 10 because the risk is not in your favor. Yeah? So you'll consider, need to consider all these. Either you develop a system on your own or you ask somebody who's professional in it to help you to appraise situations to be more on the right than on the wrong side. And also to put your position sizing according to your trade setup, how probable it is and how much you can hit for within the meaningful movement into the market. Yeah? So 
now we have defined entries, exits, and stops. So we got the stop check marks on it. Yeah. So we have we talked about risk guidelines, and you know, never ever ever dare to lose more than five percent. But that's easy to be said of your account. Sometimes you'll need to look at highly volatile stocks or things that come out like pharmaceuticals uh, with a news announcement. They can be half tomorrow, so therefore your position size has to be according, and that all has to be le learned. Yeah, professional traders take the other side of your trade. They only trade it because they have a different perception of what it could be, or they just think they can beat you on time because you get nervous and you get out of the position prior to making the move because you don't understand maybe uh, the, the price pattern where the uh, market makers adjust and uh, make just a little wiggle room on the other side to get your stops yeah, on the, the short or on the long side. So then expectation on time is essential. Yeah, Expectation on time because the price move for every trade has to be timed. How long do I want to be in the trade? What do I expect? I'm not in it to be right. I'm in it to make money. So one to five bars, maximum 10 bars, it's a great rule you can put in the back of your mind or learn with us here. Yeah, so here, let's look. That's the uh, swing point system. System that took me five years to develop, but I got it finished, just launched it. And so even have a little special in the back of my mind if, we, if you want to be latching on to that tonight. So what does it tell you? It tells you key swing points. Here you see here, swing up. Ooh, yeah. And swung right here to your target. Nice, it went a little higher. Yeah, but here it failed, and here it swings down, and here it swings down. So in that period that we're observing here, yeah, so what do we have? We have a 20-day, one-hour chart of the S&P E-mini. We had four positive trades and one loss. So if your risk is not bigger than the reward, which it shouldn't be on that chart, then you're positive. Yeah? So so one out of five, um, it's, it's a pretty good attainment rate. Is it always like this? Yeah, there will be some losses, but we have high probability trade setups within following institutional money moves, and you just need to be a participant. If you only did that trade, then you're bad. If you did all the trades, you have a high probability to come out positive. Yeah. So now I show you the same happening on the HF chart. Same happening. So, whoa, man, why is it HF so having so many more trades? Because it's a different algorithm that's embedded into the HF chart. And so the F HF chart basically gives you seven winning trades and one loss here. That was a loss because it didn't get to target. So here there was stop. But all these other trades, you see here the dots on the chart, they nicely came to their target here. Yeah? So they all nicely came to their target and made what they were supposed to do. And so within that, we had even seven winners and one loss. And that's, again, I did this this morning. Yes, a little later, because I, I, tra I traded in between a little. Yeah, and so therefore, here you have the 11 o'clock uh, bar recording the happening for the S&P E-mini on an HF chart. Yeah, And you can be part of this. You learn also within our volume of what's happening at certain points. And then we know, OK, maroon color, this bar has a setup volume. If the high low of this one is broke longer term, bang, there is something happening. And it happened greatly here for us to move and get along with it. Now I do one thing that a lot of the Nevelos traders use, because they think of participation rate. Yeah? Participation rate, so how many of the opportunities did I participate? So you see here, in respect to the chart I showed you prior, the HF, uh, Nevelos trading, HF trading chart, has a 60% higher participation rate than swing trading. That's reflected in the price. That's reflected in the hours of trading that you get with the one or the other. But here you participate highly. It depends of what you want to do. Some people want to trade only a couple of times a day, a week, or a month. And others want to trade high frequently because they have it in front of their eyes. But I always encourage everybody, get a life. Trade one-hour charts. Trade uh, four-hour charts. Trade daily charts. You have much higher returns than trying to trade on these very, very short time frames that I can make with easy math show you that, that you look, the S&P in average in uh, five minute charts moves $37.50. You have to give a tick so you trade for $25, but you have to give a tick on the other side, you, you will lose when you lose $50. So at 66% attainment rate, you are making break even, not considering even that you had 
uh, paid commission, like $5 a round trip commission. So if you don't consider this, money will not be able to be made as more exciting it is. So therefore people ask me, Thomas, do you have a trade room? I said, no, what am I going to save for four to five hours? Because you know, entering that trade, five hours later, bang, yeah, we take profit. That what am I going to say for this? You learn how to do it on your own, with the, out of the comfort of your house, out of the comfort of your job, because you only need to observe the market at certain points, and you can work with buy stop and sell stop orders. Here with brackets, you, you know you stop, and you know you're targeting, you just let it come home. We don't have to control every trade every minute. Totally not necessary. So now I did a combination of this thing. Oof! Wow! What happens if we take uh, the swing point trading? and uh, the uh, HF trading all into one chart. And then you see, wow, I had 10 wins and we had one loss. Yeah, because by the rules of the HF, there was one trade which would be prevented, where we have a double signal here, the buy-buy signal. But that's, even when you took that as a loss, then it's still a phenomenal result. And you increased, again, your participation rate by 38%. So you had 38% more trades than if you only used the HF chart. And this is what a lot of the never loss trading users do. After they buy the first system, they buy a second one down the road because they pay it back quickly. Average return rate, two months. But you need to trade. That's the key. Yeah. So what have we learned so far? Defined entries, profitability, probability setup, risk guidelines, time in the trade. And now we ha need to have a trade finder. We need to find where do the fish swim? Yeah, your fish finder is essential. Where do the fish swim? I like these national geographics where you sometimes see these fishermen with modern technology, and when they know where the fish swim, then it's easy for them to catch it. The same within uh, being able to choose out of 40,000 different uh, assets that you can trade, the ones that you want to trade, and they're worthwhile your money. Yeah? So let's go ahead and look at the trade finder. So we created reports. And for the bigger systems like Never Lost Trading Top Line and HF, those reports are free for the first three months. You can subscribe for them after. But every day we list assets. Here's an example for stocks, but also Forex pairs and uh, uh, futures and option trades potential, yeah, where you can see, OK, what's going on? You see here for option trades, excellent option conditionally, acceptable, possible, yeah, don't trade that on here. and then. They all came to target, so we had six winners, one loser in that report, so that was an 86% attainment rate. And we go in even more detail. So in one to 10 bars, the average was four bars in the trade. And then you see, you get an idea of what you're even supposed to pay for the option, while we have very specific setups of how we teach you to trade the option uh, along with the institutional money moves there where the volume is. Yeah, open interest doesn't interest us much. We look and go with the volume because then you're on the safe side of the trade. Yeah. So this is how it realized that two of the trades. Yeah. Boeing aircraft. Here we had a sell signal. Yeah. One day came home and realized. Or here on uh, Yahoo we had a very nice sell signal here. Took a little longer, but also we traded for more than a dot. So then we have to increase our sell side, and we came right here to target and went even deeper. So we ended up here but we didn't want to add more time to it. And that was a 65% return trade on options. Not bad, so we'll take that any given day when we can. Yeah. So how can we learn this? Yeah. How can that come to you? Each NLT system will be taught and adjusted to your wants and needs and preferences. While we still want to open your mind, if you only want to trade one asset, we want to talk with you about uh, maybe there's other assets to consider to increase your participation rate, because you want to compete for more opportunities. And to do so, uh, then we'll move you ahead. Yeah, we look time-based. So what times are available? Certain assets move at certain times. Yeah, I mentioned one today that moves at certain times of the day, and uh, participation rate. How many trades does one asset have in comparison to another? And how do you? How many of those do you want to get and want to be in it? Do you want to trade income-based? What your daily income you make? Uh, people that started want to make two hundred dollars a day, seven hundred fifty a day. Depends, and then we work with you. We'll, you'll see a business plan of how that works out and, and tells you how much capital you need and what return rate and what uh, uh, asset best to trade to move those ahead and minimum return expectations. So you shouldn't trade below a half a percent on uh, an intraday basis on a stock that's cash return, or you shouldn't trade below 35% on an option because you take a solid risk and uh, 
all of these sessions will be also always individually recorded so that you can re-record in your mind or reproduce the session so that you see, okay, that's what I learned, this is how I want to go ahead, and these are the key essentials of my learning experience. And this is your individual video. It's not published anywhere you on uh, YouTube or anywhere else. It's all for you. Yeah? So this is how it looks again on a chart, yeah, crude oil chart, because I was asked prior for it. So you had here crude oil development, so you see short home, long home, long home, and then you had a short environment, which did not, there's subs up there, did not on that chart get realized. The TF openly, I don't trade that often, but I can show you a chart if you want that in a personal session, yeah? Be glad to do this. But here you see, for example, on the ES, that was made for a trader as well. He wanted to have only the ES, so we made him different times, side by side. He uses two systems, top line, and uh, he uses uh, the swing trading uh, system, so he used them side by side, and so we helped him setting up his computer, and everything with us is done for you. So you have to do nothing, then give us your thinkorswim password and ID, or a temporary password and ID. We put everything on the system for you, because thinkorswim provides real-time data for us within all those indicators to portray them on the chart. You don't have to be putting your money there, because most of the uh, Nevertheless traders there with Ninja Trader and also with TradeStation, and Charles Schwab and others, wherever they keep their money, but you need one provider that gives you the chance. Yeah? So repetitive action and controlling risk, that is key. So if you can do that, you see here, okay, I got a one-on-one -on -one trade, I'll take it on a strong setup. I got a one-on-one -on -one trade on a strong setup. I want to go one-on-three trade setup. I'll take all these because you learn the odds of yourself moving ahead and getting them deployed. Because the red lines on the chart, those are the stop lines. They tell you the wiggle room the price needs in its price development. And when that stop line is hit, like we was here, then there is a change in direction to be expected. So if you trail with the stop line, so the moment that stop line is hit, it's time for you to go, because then we have a change in direction. Can it go up again? Yes. But we don't take chances, we'll take money. That's the idea, being shorter term in the trade, moving ahead, taking money off the market, and constantly staying engaged. Either through your own analysis, Nevertheless Trading Top Line comes with own scanners, and uh, there you can daily or intraday scan the markets, but also you can subscribe, or for the first three months within Top Line and HF you get the reports for free, where you get all these alerts, and what's hot, you put them on your watch list, you put you a high-low breaker, and then you see immediately when one of them breaks and you trade along with the new direction to take. So we are, we are teaching a very smaller community because we do everything individually. So if you want to be part of this and want to have the opportunity to take a schedule a personal consulting hour, here are our contact information, yeah, 866-455-4520, yeah, and uh, that's the phone number, or even better, contact the nevertheless-trading.com. We set you up, we show you how that all works, and want to help you to be better traders, yeah? Because you see here, entries, exit stops, test what you trade today, against all those integrities and see if you don't have them, either you fill it in yourself or you need to have somebody who helps you to fill it in, in particular here your financial uh, action plan, yeah? So financial and uh, action plan is a business plan, yeah? So both. Let's give you an example of what that means. So here I had a trader, he can trade in the morning between 3 a.m. and 5.30 and 8.45 to 2 p.m. So he has his reasons for that. So we put together opportunities on uh, charts of what he can do and where he can participate in, yeah? And with, within that, we said, okay, here, this is what you can participate in, and later on, we, picked and we pick and choose what's the best for you, because we want to calculate financial results. But apart from that, we look at an action plan. So if you're a 10-minute trader, those are your actions, yeah? For stock trades, that's what you're going to do, duck, 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 duck. You follow those principles, risk per trade, reward per trade, minimums, what you expect, if you're a futures trader, that's what you do, and you follow your charts, yeah? So that's from yesterday, see, oh, no, from today. CRM, it was on our list this morning, bang, we took this trade long uh, on a 10-minute chart, there was the price point to take, short, yeah? One, two, three, four bars in the trade, bang, short, out. Yeah, and then we had another price reversal. The same we do for like an hourly chart, yeah? So here you see the Australian dollar, yeah? See a couple of nice trades on the Aussie dollar, yeah, so this one 
this one we take, this one we wouldn't, you learn this, this one is a nice reversal trade, and uh, we'll do the same on like a forward time frame. It's again the Aussie dollar, so yeah, wow, nice stops over here, yeah, okay, we, this one was not a trade because next candle they could take it out, but we had one good trade, two good trades, three good trades, four good trades in one direction, and you always know where you take your profits, yeah? And so together with you, and everybody's different, then we define, say, okay, whatever you want to trade, look, it takes you about $20,000 of capital to trade 10-minute charts on, uh, to make $400 income, Oof. yeah? So that was the goal of the individual uh, on that in a, in a month by doing so many trades, 10 trades by the available time the person had or you take those others, and so therefore, that's the absolute maximum if you're being engaged in everything, but usually you're not even in a four hour chart, one hour chart, and a 10 minute chart, and that would be your return expectation per month. But so, Will can now finagle it, so I'm in the process with that person to say, why do you want to do all this, trade a little more futures on the longer run, and you'd be much better on, you need very little capital, you have a phenomenal return, and he's trading at a 75 to 80% rate. So he's knowing what he's doing, understood the system, supplying it right, and so therefore now the coaching comes in, and you see that's very important to have feedback. Even though you're good with an 80% attainment rate, feedback helps you to create your pockets of money, where to invest in, and how to move ahead. So therefore we come to our offer. In our mentorships, yeah, we have everything server installed, so everything goes on the server. If you buy a new computer, you need nobody of us. It's there forever. Yeah, and it's there with Thinkorswim, which is TD Ameritrade. That's the biggest of the open platforms that is around. Everything is real-time data. Yeah, so they even now at milliseconds, you know entries, exits, and stops at any point in time. Uh, you learn the position sizing. You remember our risk guidelines. Uh, you know your time in a trade, one to five bars, maximum ten. You have your risk approximation by the stop where it is at any point. And also you learn uh, trade adjustments. If things go wrong with stocks or options, we show you how you can adjust your trades and the risk handling that's uh, uh, assumed under this one. So all of this starts with a very basic system, which is called tradecolors.com. Yeah, my mouse does something funny here. Which is called tradecolors.com, which moves you ahead. And after a sequence of two of the same, long or short candles, you trade in one direction, so you see here gold trade with substantial amounts of, as you know, see here, this system sells for $2,497, and with a couple of trades, you'll easily make your tuition back if you follow the rules and guidelines, yeah? Or coming, bringing it all together, we want to give you professional teaching and coaching to spot and trade along with institutional money moves to make you a consistent trader so that you know what to do the alerts are very essential for you in uh, doing that matter because the alerts give you what's hot. Yeah? And it might be the TF, the Russell, uh, it might be the Dow, or it might be uh, some of the grains like corn or soybeans uh, where you need to see if you want to trade this asset, if it's in your trading plan and how to trade it to move ahead because if you do corn, uh, you better know your lock limit so that you're not getting surprised. Yeah? And all of that. Uh, here is a short overview of uh, a couple of our premier products, yeah? Uh, top line, top of the line for the independent investor, the frequent trader, HF, the swing point trader, new program uh, right now at a, at a very favorable price and trade color. So you see, this is what we're asking for. Always remember, this is individual teaching at your time of availability. We love to, for example, do pre-market education. Yeah, or even early morning education, yeah, early, early morning. We have some traders that prefer to do the European session, so we meet them at 3 a.m. to work with them so that they learn to do this because they have a different profession to do back after. And so if you want to be part of this, give us a ring at 866-455-4520 uh, or give us an email at contact at Nevelos Trading. So the base performing system here, see, win trade, that was a loss, yeah, why was it a loss? Because it didn't come to target this trade, didn't trade for the candle, but you see here, five winning trades, one loss, even with a very basic system, uh, and uh, helping you to get along, but it's harder to do this, because here you'll have to put your support resistance lines and the details in yourself, but it's still workable, it gets you into the way of algorithmic trading, 
And what we offer you, you pay money for this and you want to upgrade later, which a lot of our students did, you will be getting credited for what you paid for the base system. Yeah? So we credit you back for this and uh, so therefore you only have to pay the difference for moving ahead with a higher level system. So what's the difference? Hours of education, indicators, documentation, all of this. This is HF here on the right side and this is like trade colors. So you have uh, less participation rate, less uh, education hours, but still it's a good start. But here if you want to make professionals, so it's HF or top line, or even a, a great deal right now, swing trading, because they can help you for a great deal of getting the direction right here. Yeah? So therefore, again, here our offering, that's what we bring down for you here, and we teach it individually, have documentation. Why is the documentation important? You are, you are somewhere and you want to read up about some trade situation for a certain product, you can go back into an electronic document on your iPad, on your iPhone, and you just look it up. All our recordings we send to you through the Amazon cloud, so you lo load it down from the cloud, and then afterwards you plug it into your system, so you go through the entire teaching session. We're always prepared, so we love in advance if you tell us what you want to have. If we don't prepare, we prepare for you what we think you need to have for making that business right and making good decisions within being the trader you want to be. Yeah? So therefore we offer that to you here as a total package for uh, education, direction, indicator installment, and joint work to understand how institutional money moves happen and how you can spot and follow them and to move along with them. And we invite you because we are not always open, we are now open for new students because you know capacity is limited. Yeah? You want to have professional education, you want to have uh, somebody who did it for long and work with, work with you, helping you on board to be the trader that you want to be. So with that, I'm open to your questions. We have only three minutes left. If you want to put your questions in here, uh, if you get the chance, please show the CNN and ETF trade. I'm not on the platform, yeah? You're welcome. Do me a favor, because until I got the platform up now, uh, uh, then we'll have the time passed. But give me an email, and I set up a time for you and I, and I show you the TF trade, ES trade, or whatever. This is for everybody. You can call the shots, but only do it if you're really interested in it, because you know all our time is precious. Yeah? If you're interested in it, we look at the good trades, we look at the bad trades, and then we count them up, and you will see what high probability trading means. Nothing needs to be hidden in this. We'll take every challenge for every uh, individual asset that you can trade. As I told you, it reaches from random length lumber into a trading apple on different time frames, and we show you how we do it, and we show you how the system uh, spots and portrays the, uh, the institutional money moves on the chart because as I saw, as you saw at the beginning, the institutions trigger the move. Big institutions got more influence over the time. That's good for us. It's good for us because we can spot them, we can see them, we can follow them, and we can make the best for ourselves out of it because we can enter and exit positions much faster than the institutions can. So if there are no more questions left, uh, please, if you have them, type them in here. Uh, then I'd be happy to give it another two minutes because that's our one minute that we have. And then Kevin's going to take over and close the session for tonight. Thank you, Kevin and Kathy, for arranging that. Hopefully I could have made your night exciting and also trigger your mind for whom you need to look at, whom to follow, and why institutional money moves. And don't do it and don't try to do it within moving average technique because that would be too easy. I programmed this in 12 minutes. Uh, and uh, if it's that easy, it's not going to work long term. Yeah, so always be careful what system you follow. Uh, the MACD, it's, it's, it's okay, but it has a 54% expectation, and uh, sometimes it has a higher reward than risk, so it might not get you there. Here with the algorithmic trading and activity-based trading, you have a much higher prob probability of the setup, and that might get you where you want to be as a trader. It's an investment, but that's everything is a return on investment in our lives. And uh, the investment in yourself usually pays the highest return. And we are welcoming your students for now. Thank you very much, again, for your attention. You have a wonderful evening. And if you have questions, contact at nevelostrading.com.